Well, yesterday, uh, morning, everybody. Uh, some light in on the situation. Yesterday, I uh, started the meeting, and over to the right, uh, there was something where I could mute the little ding dong from everybody coming into the meeting, and I'm not sure where that is now because it's looking a little different. I mean, Zoom went down for like three hours yesterday. What? Zoom crashed globally for three hours. That's what I heard, but not during my class, because that's how that goes. <laughs> I just is lucky, I guess. <laughs> no, there's no luck. I, I emailed him and said, not during my class. Just the <laughs> class. <laughs> anyway, let me see. Gosh, there's usually, like I said, yesterday there was something to stop the sort of dinging noise, but I don't know. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Let me just kind of look around here for a second and uh, we'll get going here in just a minute. I made this for 8.30 because if we really don't have to meet at eight o'clock, why should I do? Uh, yeah. Hey, Yan, what's up? Are you a, hey, you a, hi. Oh my gosh, it is early. Uh, although I've been in the garden because I have a four acre farm for the last couple hours, so. Uh, already been busy all right how many people we got in here 61 uh we're still going to get a few more people so i'm going to try and set a couple more things here yeah i was out sweating in the garden this morning so it's a baseball hat for this morning rather than didn't have quite enough time to jump back in the shower all right Yeah. Cute dog. Is my dog in the background? Or is somebody else? More. Somebody else got a dog. Oh, yeah. Where is that? Where am I over my shoulder? <laughs> All right. I'll let a few more people join us here and then we'll start. Look through the page at everyone's smiling faces this morning. Okay. All right. Sixty nine, a few more people, and then we'll we'll get it going and uh just sort of have an introduction today at least. Talk about the class a little bit. All right. I think I have to, I just got a new Mac over the last few days and uh, it's cutting off this much of my head. So I think I need to raise it up by putting it up on something. I noticed that yesterday. I'll do that eventually here. All right, let's see how many folks we have. All right, 69, well, we'll go with that. Um, morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, please mute your microphones uh, if they are not muted already. And then if you have a question or if uh, you, you know, need to raise your hand, ask a question, anything like that, um, then you can. And like I said, I'll, I'll get that sort of ding dong thing gone next time because um, I'm missing a bar over here uh, as far as like sort of a bar that had a bunch more options yesterday. Anyway, regardless. Welcome to SOCH 220 Environmental Sociology. Ah, just messing with everybody. It's early. I know. I'm sorry. I should. I should. I shouldn't do that. It's early. Welcome to. Uh, welcome to sociology. This is 100, and I think this is the 003 section. Um, so we don't have quite as many people. I've got another class with 233 in it for 100 section, and this one um, only has, I don't know, 100 and some only, but. Uh, too many people for us to get in a classroom this semester, but I promise you, I'm excited about uh, I'm excited about this regardless. And I think it's going to be a lot better than in the spring, than when nobody sort of knew what was going on, and we were asking like teachers and students and everybody else to just completely redo their lives and reinvent how we do school. I think we did a pretty good job, but this fall it seems like it's going to be a lot better. Um, just just. Just uh, even even my kids, I've got two boys that are 12 and 15, and just the fact that they're getting to meet and doing things, I think a bit 
like I said, a bit more intuitively and like real class um, than in the spring anyway. So welcome everybody. How many folks do we have here? Finally, 71. All right, good enough. We'll start this. Uh, usually I'll record these and this one is being recorded. I don't know how many times we're gonna check in per week. Um, maybe we'll do a couple at our regular meeting time. I don't wanna have anything that's not at our regular meeting time because this is when you expect to meet and when you registered for the class. So that's fine, um, but it really uh, just depends on what we need to get done. Unlike other semesters, um, I recorded all of the lectures for this semester in advance all summer long. So basically, all of the teachers that you have have been working all summer long at trying to get their classes going for the fall when normally we would be partying and not thinking about school. No, I don't know. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be working all summer long anyway, um, but, but we have been. So um, it was weird for me because I like to keep things topical because this is sociology. So we're going to talk all semester long. You know, when you go home for the holidays and your parents say, now, please don't talk about politics or don't talk about this or don't talk about that because we have relatives over. We don't want to stress everybody out. That's what we talk about every single day in sociology. One day it's gay marriage. The next day it's war on drugs. The next day it's race and racism and how that impacts our lives. So the things that we're going to be talking about um, this morning and this semester um, are important and it's a bit different than other classes. Let me turn on the light here. Oh. oh, there we go. Now you can see my paled freckle face just a little bit better. All right, so this fall, um, I'm really excited. Like I said, we have a couple GTAs, folks um, that I've worked with, and that's our team. Uh, raise your hand, wave your hand if you're on the, the SOCH team. Um, I'll introduce those folks and let them have a chance to say something in a bit. Um, but let me just tell you how this semester is gonna work. Uh, first of all, my name is Jason. And I'm out here on my four acre farm. Uh, I have a farm in Laporte and uh, my partner Julie and I have been together 25 years. We have two boys, Storm and Zion. And now I know what you're thinking already. It's early, this guy's got a farm and his kids are named Storm and Zion. He's probably a hippie, but I guarantee you I take showers and I will, uh, I will uh, make sure that, that, that I don't um, fulfill your expectations too much for being such a big hippie. Um, I've been teaching for about 13 years uh, and I applied last semester. It's the first time CSU has had a promotion process for people that are not tenured. Um, so I'm a senior instructor. I did get that. I'm excited because I've been here a long time. I love CSU. Thank you. Thank you. I love CSU and, um, and I love teaching and I love sociology. So I'm going to ask some things this semester of you that might be different from a little of your classes. Um, so let's just kind of get into this. Um, I guess how I would do this day one. Normally, my classes, and they will be very high energy, and I'm everywhere in the classroom. I'm pretty much going to stay right here for these, but like I promised, if you saw the intro video on YouTube, I'm not going to be in my office with my diplomas displayed behind me so that you know exactly how smart I am because I know how to frame a piece of paper. Anybody can do that and put it on their wall. Finishing a degree is admittedly a lot harder. So I'm excited for this semester and uh, um, some of you might be seniors, a lot of you might be new students here. And uh, my props to all of you who finished the weirdest senior year in high school and are now part of the weirdest freshman class in any college. I, I appreciate you rolling with it because um, this is full of lots of challenges, but, but I don't wanna be cheesy with that. Raise your hand if you've had a teacher say, this semester is unlike any other semester and we're going to be tackling it, right? You know, we already know, we already know what's up. And I think that I want you to know that I take that into account. I had people last semester that were like, Jason, I don't know if I could turn this on time. I'm living with my parents for the first time in three years and it sucks. Um, I know you love your parents, but I also know that there are some unique challenges to doing what you're doing right now. So I'm gonna be flexible and I'm gonna ask uh, you to be flexible as well. So this is intro to sociology. And what I want you to do throughout the course of the semester is keep in mind kind of like a timeline. It's gonna be like, that's the past. And this is now-ish, kind of like now-ish, now-ish. It's not now, it's now-ish because now is immediately gone. And then that's the future, right? 
and nothing happens in a vacuum. When we talk about racism or power and access in this class, it just didn't just happen overnight. It's been happening for a long time. So if we take an issue like immigration and when our economy starts to do poorly or the jobless number goes up, unemployment goes up, people historically point to people of color and say, those people are stealing our jobs. That's the reason that we're in this situation. But if we look at things through a historical lens, which we're gonna do and we have this sense of time, we're gonna know that that happens again and again and again. It's not something new that we're experiencing. And so if we look at the past, it'll help us make sense of now. And the whole reason that we do sociology in the first place is to be able to make a positive change or a positive impact. We don't study the war on drugs or teenage pregnancy rates so that we're just like, oh, that's interesting. That's how many people are getting arrested. We do it so that we can make some type of, sociologists do, some type of systemic change. We can understand society better. The more we understand society, the more power we have to be able to manifest the things that we want to manifest. So this semester, I'm going to ask that we pay attention to a whole lot of things, but one of those is history and a historical timeline so that we have an idea of what's happening and why and then what we can do about it. Um, this semester, I, you can already, you can kind of read through the syllabus. The textbook is required, okay? Um, but I'm not somebody who's finding the newest version. They, they, it was new a couple of years ago, but I like this textbook and I work with our publisher, Sage, and you can find it used online. You can get it at the bookstore. You can get a virtual copy with a print copy that you sell the print copy and then, you know what I'm saying? So I'm making this textbook available to you and accessible to you for not a lot or for cheaper than many because it's not brand new and it doesn't have to be. So get that because you will absolutely need it. You'll be writing content assignment essays. You'll be doing things where you need in-text citations from the textbook. So get this textbook. I like this textbook. I know that's, that's weird. I guess the only people that say I like this textbook are like teachers and people who are really, really, really into whatever they're studying at the time. I like this textbook. That being said, I'm gonna amend it with all sorts of things because you know nothing's perfect. So you need to get the textbook. All right, um, next on the list is Top Hat. I have had a lot of questions about Top Hat, okay? Um, that is like an eye clicker but it's a student response system that I think is a lot deeper. Instead of A, B, C, or D over and over and over again, the eye clicker is gonna be able to allow us, or excuse me, the top hat is gonna be able to allow us to get a lot more detailed answers. Like I'm gonna ask a hundred some people, what's one word that comes to mind when you think of the gender male, right? And that's going to be an interesting list that we make and, 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 and kind of dicey at times. And then we're going to talk about that. Why do we feel this way? What words were on this list? Who do we think of when we think of this? What kind of power relationships do we have? And that's going to be a lot easier with Top Hat. So here's how I do it. And I know it costs 30 bucks, okay? I've got the join code in the announcements. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. No harm, no foul. It's optional. If you do do it, okay, then by clicking in, and basically I'll have two or three questions each session, and I'll tell you when those are, not yet, because I'm just getting everybody signed up. You'll go in, you'll answer a couple questions, and if you answer those questions, it's not about right or wrong, it's just did you answer them, okay? If you answer those questions 90% of the time and above, you'll get a 5% added to your grade at the very end, okay? So at the very end, and then 80% in the time if you click in and above, you get 4% at your grade, 70% and above, 3%. Here's the deal. I have a lot of people at the end of the semester that are like, Jason, things just did not work out for me this semester. I'll tell you what. Do you know what's going to happen this semester? Life. Life is going to happen. And that means that somebody who really, really is in love with somebody is going to break up with somebody, and it's going to be the hardest thing of their whole life. And then 30 days later, they're going to be, how could I have ever been with that person? Oh, my God, I'm so happy I'm not anymore. Anyway, right? Somebody's going to be shredding some gnarly pow pow bra, and they're going to break a leg. Like, all sorts of things are going to happen to you. So I want you to know, like I said before, like, I want you to be flexible. And I want us to understand that, that this is a semester unlike any other. So 
if that happens and at the end of the semester you have an 89.2 i get emails that are like jason can you bump my grade uh can you boost it can you give it a little ch -ch 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 -ch? you know can you inflate it i don't even know what those things mean but i build things into my class and into the syllabus so that you don't have to do that you can keep your integrity earn some extra points and if you did okay because i don't think that anybody should like do really poorly on a test in here and then that ruins their grade for the whole semester they can no longer get an a or manifest the grade that they want that's 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 not me i'm here to help everybody i'm here to teach you and you know a lot of times we just cram information so much for classes it's like cram 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 and we regurgitate it on the test and then it's like see you later bro that information we never remember again but i want you to retain this information this semester okay that's really really important to me so so that you retain the information so that's not so harsh i build that clicker thing in because it's fun because it's sociology and because we get good answers and so you can earn extra points so i have a few top head subscriptions that i have i don't know how to say it I pretty much get what I want from Top Hat because I've been working with them for a while. It generates a lot of dollars because I have a lot of students. So therefore, whatever I say, they usually do. I did get a handful of subscriptions. If you cannot afford the $30 subscription, it's, it's for all the hundreds of students I have. It's not that many, but I don't want money to be why somebody can't participate on that level. That being said, there is no penalty for not using it. Okay. So you go, you sign up, do not do, if you want to do it, do not do the free thing. Don't do the freebie. Because what happens is, inevitably, the free thing lasts a month, and then they yank it, and then it's associated with a different email, or you don't have that data anymore. If you're going to do it, do it from the start, commit to it. If you're not, don't, okay? Um, but that should be pretty easy. If you need help with that, let me know. Otherwise, sign up for it, and I'll put information later this week. Um, on what that means and when we're gonna start doing our questions. Let me scroll through, we got three pages of people. I just wanna take a look at you for a second, cause I can. Nice, good. Next page, excellent. Awesome, good. Forgive me, but uh, I need to check all of you out here in virtual world because uh, like you, I'd probably rather, much rather, not like, but or probably, but would much rather be in the classroom. All right, so the textbook, that's top hat. There are four exams in this class, okay? They're worth 100 points a piece, and it's 50 multiple choice, true, false, okay? You're gonna be writing a lot as it is, all right? We have a research paper in here, I'll get to that in a minute. The whole point of college really, one of the whole points is developing your writing skills, okay? If you graduate and you have earned the ability and gained the ability and cultivated the ability to write well and get your ideas across to other people, you are going to be much more successful and have a much better chance at manifesting what you want in this life. So we're going to be working with you throughout the course of the semester, but the exams are going to be pretty basic. Get in, get out, 100 points, there's four of those, okay? Multiple choice. And we've got some online discussions, and I'll explain those in a little bit more detail. There's an observation at the beginning and end. Those don't need to be posted a week ahead of time, but the main topics, I'm asking that if it's due on the 17th, that you post your first discussion post by the 10th. Why? Because I've been teaching online for 13 years for a long time, and if we don't do that, everybody posts all their posts at the end. And there's no real discussion that takes place. So check out the discussions, because they're over some really interesting things. I think the first discussion is over a movie called Chicken People. I know, I know, I know, I own a farm. But chicken people is not necessarily what you think or what I think. And that's one of the reasons that I wanna show you a lot of really cool stuff this semester, you know, because sociology is absolutely everywhere. So there's a social observation where you have to observe people, maybe around campus, maybe online in your classes. Raise your hand if you're one of those people that likes to watch other people. Just throw your hand up. Like if you find people interesting and you're like, you know what, why? That's what we're gonna talk about this semester, kind of that whole why business. Stuff that you sort of have an idea about, but then we'll use social science to back it up, right? Um, and, and that's the important part about this semester. Yeah, your own personal insight and your beliefs are really important, 
but the fact that we use good social science is really important. I do teach a Soch 220, which is an environmental sociology class. And on day one later today, I'm gonna to say, this is all about science. It's not about belief. We know what's going on with the environment. So if that's gonna stress you out because you're all based in beliefs and not in science, maybe you don't wanna take the class, okay? All right, so discussions, we've got four exams. Um, top hat, let me see, uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, I'm not sure how many times yet we're gonna be meeting per week. We will at least meet every Tuesday morning and maybe we'll do the Tuesday, Thursday thing. What I would like to do is meet and talk about top hat answers and get into discussions that we have about those questions because I've already done the lectures and those questions are embedded in the lectures. So you can kind of see them throughout the lectures and then you can jump on once I ask those questions and do that. So we'll try and stay as um, connected as possible that way. Uh, all right, so here's, here's the thing. I'm a pretty easygoing person. I think that everybody already gets that idea. Don't get that idea though that I'm so easygoing that I'm not an academic guy that I just wanna hang out and have a good time this semester. Um, I want you to learn a lot about topics that I think are very, very, very important. Um, and so the most important thing you can do, and I think I have this on the syllabus in all caps, which is like shouting, I guess. So I don't mean to shout and I hardly ever do that, but stay in touch, reach out to me, schedule some office hours, like virtual office hours and say, hey, I need some help. Because one of the dangers of this semester is gonna be that we're at a distance. And so you're just, if people get behind, they might get more behind and more behind and more behind. And then you don't wanna reach out to a teacher, cause why? Cause I'm gonna look over my glasses at you and give you some teacher look like oh, I'm disappointed in you. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But if you wanna do well in this class, you're gonna have to be able to stay in touch so that you don't get too far behind. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, it's gonna be really important this semester because it's gonna go as fast as it does every semester. First day of class, I always say, we're already halfway through the semester. And then just like that, boom, eight weeks, two months passes just like that and we're halfway through the semester. All right, so things about me personally. Um, I spent a lot of time doing race relations work over the last 25 years. I worked at Augsburg College um, at a place called Interrace. My undergraduate degree was a degree that was a race relations degree that I made up. Women's studies, Latino studies, Africana studies, sociology, anthropology. My master's degree was a double major with sociology and race relations. And so here's where we're at with that. We have a problem on campus every semester for the last several years. If you Google CSU racism, unfortunately, you will have a lot of stuff come up. And so here's the deal. I very, very, very much um, am driving a class that has a lot of respect for everyone, okay? In regards to race and racism, the one thing, because I'm an easygoing dude, that will absolutely stop the presses, do not pass go, do not collect $200, and, and, and we'll figure that out, is if anybody posts or says or types or engages in racist behavior. No, we do, it's, it's like, we don't not know what racism is. I've been doing it for a long time. I know exactly what it is. It is very tangible and we've got to get CSU ahead of the curve because every time this happens over the last few years, what happens? We get an email from the president that says how anti-racist we really are and till the next email where we say how absolutely anti-racist we are and not a lot is getting done. And I'm gonna put that on the college. Right before spring break last year, a whole bunch of students and faculty members concerned with race relations on campus and sort of how big the racism thing was getting um, got together and demanded um, of, of the administration that they meet and reconcile this and put real systemic changes in place. Now, that didn't get to happen, obviously, because we didn't really come back from spring break, but it's important to me that everyone is treated in this class with value and like a human being and with decency. And at the end of every class, for like 10 years, I've told my students, be good people and do good things. I mean that. You are repping me out there, you are repping you, and you are repping CSU. And so what I really want is for you to concentrate this semester to be the best human beings that you can be so that we don't have to deal with this, okay? Um, we are not a post-racial society. Race matters a whole lot because historically we have said 
it matters a whole lot. So we'll talk about that this semester, but I want my students to absolutely be on top of being the best people they can be. I know that last year when, um, you know, some students posted themselves in blackface, super ridiculous, absolutely racist in violation of the student code. I knew that wasn't my students right away. Or when I found out, right, because it's important to me, but I know that's not my people. Okay. So I want you to be good people and I want you to do good things. And I mean it. I think that we need um, to improve this campus in regards to that and make it a safe and fun place for everybody. All right. Raise your hand if you're with me. Nod your head. Excellent. I need you to be awesome people this semester and make sure that that's the case. Um, all right. So let me see. What if, let me look at any questions. If you have any questions, type some questions down, all right? Um, just so that I know. Or raise your hand. Um, that's what I'm not seeing this morning, the hand raising thing that used to be up in my corner yesterday where I could like mute stuff or not. So I'm going to have to check and see what settings I changed yesterday or not. But if you have a question, type it or go ahead and unmute it and go ahead and ask. Just to clarify, if we have Top Hat, we don't need to buy a physical textbook. Okay, so Top Hat has nothing to do with your textbook. All Top Hat is, is a response system for us, okay? Your textbook is totally separate. You do need to buy it. It is not connected with Top Hat, and you can find the textbook anyway. It's in the participants section for us. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it's not here. It's usually in my, in my chat view, but I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out later. Anyway, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute your mic and ask the question. Okay, I had a question. Yep. So would you rather we email you or use the Canvas inbox for any questions we have? Uh, you can email me. That's fine. And, and more importantly, I'm going to get all the information there today for our grad assistants. Oops, sorry, the sun's starting to come in. For our grad assistants, go ahead and email them. And here's the deal. Uh, I think we have two, you, uh, do we have two grad assistants for this class? Is that correct? Um, sorry, I've, I've got a lot going on. But we have two folks, and I'm going to split the class down the middle, and one of those two people would be grading your papers all semester and grading the same papers, which means that you get to work with one person who's going to help you cultivate your writing. So reach out to that person. Reach out to me. We have a team. We're, uh, let's see. I, oh, I guess I should tell you, I'm from Chicago. So... Here's the deal. That's right. Bulls, baby. Anybody watch The Last Dance? Oh, that was such a good documentary. Uh, Bulls fan, Bears fan. So I would suggest that it might be hard for you to succeed in this class if you're a Packers fan this semester. I'm just saying. Just kidding. Now, how many people are going to type Go Pack Go? I hope nobody. Duh, Bears. Anyway, sorry. I'm getting off topic. Uh, you can email me. Email your GTAs. And, and I think the people, look, the people in the social department are fantastic. Um, look, sociologists are skeptical. I'm skeptical of a lot of things, but I endorse only a few things. I endorse the sociology department. I endorse the Instapot. Do you know what Instapot is? You know what I'm saying? It's that it's the thing, the pressure cooker where you can cook like anything in any amount of time. So those are my two endorsements this morning, the sociology department and Instapot, not cannabis, the cooking thing. All right, let's get that straight, it's early. Now, if you have any questions, reach out to us directly. You don't need to go through Canvas, that's fine. But check on Canvas and announcements, because that's where I'm putting up everything. And I worked with like a design, sectional design expert this summer. So there's videos there, all the PowerPoints are there, all the links should be pretty easy. If you can't find anything, you know, reach out to us. Oh, I need to get some hand lotion going on this morning too hands are a little bit dry after working in the garden. All right, other questions. Give me your questions. Um, do you have a preference of like how we, um, or like how we address you? Like, do you prefer pre Professor Downing or do you prefer Dr. Downing? Which do you prefer? Um, okay, that's a great question. Um, you've probably already gotten the vibe that I'm not a Sir or Dr. Downing kind of guy. Um, yeah, I have. <laughs> you know, this isn't Teacherville. And that's not Studentopolis. If this was a classroom, I'd be up all around that classroom in your business and around it. You can come up to me and ask questions. I want to be as accessible as possible. One of the things that I think is important is that I don't come off as too smart or self-important. Like, I learn stuff from my students every single semester that I think is fantastic. You all have experiences that I do not have. And so, yeah, 
Um, Jason is fine. I, although people haven't called me Jason for like 20 years. Everybody calls me Jay. Um, so, you know, whatever you feel is fine. Uh, Jason or, I don't know, professor, whatever, you know, what, whatever. I'm, I'm informal because basically what I'm saying is I don't want my education to be a barrier to your education. And I think sometimes in higher education that happens. Not calling any of my colleagues out. I love the social department. Maybe those stats people, or maybe I just hate on math because I'm not great on math. <laughs> In math. Anyway, who else has a question? I do. What time will the exams take place? Will they take place during our class period? Yeah, um, yes, but I also want to be realistic. So I'll probably open the exam up for 24 hours. Now, when you open the exam, you probably only have 75 minutes to take it because it would be like our normal class time, which is fine. I mean, Either you're going to study and know that in an hour or 70 minutes or what that is, or you're not. And, and you know, I can say, raise your hand if you've read the plagiarism statement or, or had somebody lecture you about cheating this semester. That is a lecture that I don't give, okay? Because I think it sets up something where if I talk about cheating a ton, then it almost seems like I expect that of my students, and I don't. I actually write assignments so that People can write about things that they're interested in and connected to sociology, and I'm not, I'm not worried about that. So yeah, the tests will be open for long enough to accommodate you no matter where you're at. There's people that are in this class, I think, this semester in Germany, you know, and, and all over the, the globe, let alone just sort of back here in Colorado. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, um, I see a question over here. Top hat, top hat is strictly extra credit. Now, let me say something else, because I really dig this. We have an extra credit food drive. Okay. Did you see the link? Did everybody see the link already? All right. That's to the Larimer County. Now my classes, that's you, you, not me, are the single largest donors to the Larimer County Food Bank over the last 10 years that are non-corporate, non-corporate donors. Um, last semester, we collected over $6,000 with this virtually between my classes, and that's over 12,000 meals that they can provide people because of their connections and the donations that they get. So I don't think we can talk about people and do sociology all in a classroom with like four walls. I also think we need to get out and understand what the connections to our community are. I mean, Fort Collins is a well-to-do community, right? Um, uh, that has decent amount of money and yet we still have a ton of homeless folks they never find the shelter the right way and they're working on that. Like we need to be compassionate individuals. And if you can get extra credit for donating a little bit, then I'm down with that. Again, if you don't have the minimum donation and people usually do, you can have friends and relatives donate. All my classes are in teams, Mr. Powers. Sorry, when I did that, I couldn't help myself. All my classes are in teams. And so you'll kind of be competing, competing against each other to raise money. If you don't have, I think the minimum donation is five bucks. If you don't have that, you can write a two page paper on homelessness and poverty in Northern Colorado. Um, but I don't get the impression, cause I wanna make it equitable, but I don't get the impression that people by the end of the semester really want to write another paper. So that's all student or all semester long, we'll be doing the food drive, seeing where we're at, competing a little bit, having fun. And by the end, I bet you my classes donate at least six, $7,000, provide thousands and thousands of meals for people and that would be awesome because that's you, right? That's, that's on everybody here. So anyway, you can get your friends and family involved too by sharing those links. Um, yeah, uh, I do not have the GTA's information updated on the syllabus yet, but I will make an announcement about that. And in addition to an announcement about that, I'll make the syllabus changes. And then I'm gonna have you uh, introduce yourself. Um, and, then, uh, and then you'll know also, they'll separate it by who's grading what papers. So you'll know which GTA to reach out to as well. Okay. Um, all right. Other questions. Who else has questions for me about anything? Um, My policies, how I run the class, personal life. Sorry, I'll quit talking. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I just wanted to ask because I saw um, I saw a question in the chat and they were asking about the online book. And um, I wanted to ask that question too. They said, um, can you get it online or do we have to go to the bookstore? I'm fine with whatever version you get. There's online okay. versions, like, like I'm like, I'm old. I mean, I'm not old, but I'm old enough to like, I dig like sitting with a book and highlighting. That's how I learn best, you know? But some people are like, buy the online book and copy paste is my best friend. 
So right. like in, you know, into notes to study and stuff, however you want to do it. I think I even have a version, like I mentioned in the bookstore where there's a loose leaf edition that comes with an online version and then people sell the loose leaf edition at the end of the semester or they keep it, or, you know what I'm saying? So it's flexible, whatever, whatever works. So if we did, if we did want to get like the online one, like where would we go to find it? Um, I don't want to say online, <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think you can find it, uh, Amazon. I think you could just Google the title of it and find it, find it all sorts of places. And, and I think you can buy the online version through the CSU bookstore. And I'm not sure, but I, they, maybe they, the school ate the bookstore, but it used to be one of the last sort of family run bookstores on, on, on any kind of a campus. Um, so maybe the CSU owns it. That doesn't matter. Kurt there is an amazing guy and the people in the bookstore are cool. So you can get the online version, pay for it there and then get that access code. So does that help? You can type okay. messages too if anybody wants yes, to. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so what exactly is going to happen when campus ine uh, inevitably shuts down in like two or three weeks? Because like I've already been on campus and it's just looking like it's looking like this isn't going to last very long. So, like, how is that going to affect our class? Are you when um, we inevitably shut down? Are you referring to maskless people? Um, a little or bit just, of that, just, or and just like, the sheer number of people. I think it's like it's a culmination of a lot of things. I mean, like, um, one of my roommate's girlfriends, um, she has a little brother that's a freshman, and I think there was like, I think there was almost like 150 violations of the CDC guidelines within like the first three days from like, because that will be- College students? What? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, exactly. And, and like, my point was that it's like, you take a bunch of 18 year olds who have been locked in their house for six months with their parents who have had no prom, no parties, no girlfriends or boyfriends, no graduation, none of that. And then you release them on a college campus. What do you think is going to happen? Okay, good, good question. Which brings me to an excellent point. Sexually transmitted infections are a real thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Like, no. I don't know. When I, was, when I was in high school, it was 1992. And it was like Snoop Dogg and those guys, the toughest guys were telling people to use protection. So first of all, I hope when people come back that they're being smart with their sexual behavior. I hope that they're being smart and masking up, right? And let's talk a bit about that for a second. Um, anybody who's wearing a mask on campus, not only do you have to, but you're a hero, okay? The reason that all of you 18 year olds are experiencing something less than desirable is because adults have failed you. Let's be real, okay? We have not taken science as seriously as we should. And here's how I know that you know this, because you're all paying tens of thousands of dollars to learn stuff from smart people on campus. This is a scientific institution. And they told me last May, you're not getting get in a classroom, bro. I mean, they didn't, like Joyce didn't email me and say, Jason, bro, you're not gonna get in the classroom. <laughs> but I was like, I know that. So I know I'm not getting a classroom back in May. So here's the deal. My wife and I took bets for our school district here, right? For Cooter School District. And I said, how long do you think it'll last? I said a month. She said two weeks. And they closed it down days before it was supposed to open. This will inevitably shut down. You are correct. I very much believe that. That being said, it is not going to mess with us one single bit. Because I've been preparing for this business the whole time. It's going to mess with your lives. And that's why I'm so disappointed in adults that just cannot wrap their head around things that are, that we're asking them to do for the greater good. Now, I, I have to remind you that you're all young folks, but generations previous, you had to go fight in a war, ration your food, potentially die for your country. We're asking people to wear diapers on their faces for a few minutes when they go out. It's not that hard. And, and I am very, very passionate about this. Um, because science, okay? So do that for your friends, do that for the people that you love, do that even for the people that you're not really stoked about because it's just the right thing to do. But when, uh, when we have to shut down campus, and I think you're right, and that's a good question or statement, um, we're just gonna be cruising. Nothing's, nothing's gonna mess with us all semester long. And I will say, two weeks after everybody got back last semester, like in February, I got hit with the worst pneumonia for five weeks and the darkest thing that I've ever had. And guess what? 
turned out to be this. And it was the worst thing I've ever experienced. And I'm gonna tell you, I sing for a living, I play in a band, I lecture to people, I have a huge voice, I can be in a 500 person auditorium and not, not have to use a microphone. And it tore me, and I'm super healthy, I own a farm, and it tore me down. So be mindful with each other and be safe with each other. Um, and if I got sick, it wouldn't matter because I've already got all the lectures. You know what I mean? If you get sick, I'm willing to work with you, okay? Um, it's most important to me that we take care of ourselves as human beings, okay? All right, so who else? Can I sing for the class? No. <laughs> no, I might sing for the class. I just got to think of something that I would want to sing. I've been playing in a band since I was 14. My dad used to chaperone us into places before I was old enough to play. Um, and so we, we play all over the place. And actually, we've had some social distance safe concerts out on our farm with a limited number of people. You got 50 people and they're on two acres and everybody's 50 feet apart and stuff. So anyway, yeah, um, I'm just sorry. I'm kind of uh, kind of going on, but I, I play music. I picked the best three or the, the three um, professions where I would make the least amount of money, farmer, teacher, and musician. So I've got the trifecta going right now, hitting threes. <laughs> um, but I love my students and I'm super excited. All right, so I'm gonna get to you here in a second. But any other questions? Give me, give me more questions, more questions about question. anything. Um, I'm curious, so I, I am brand new to this online learning situation. Yep. I am an adult learner and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, sure. I just wanna make sure that I understand. So the modules are already up there. We go through them based on the due dates for the assignments below and just kind of go at our own pace with that as long as the assignments are on time. Yeah, you know, the assignments have dates and the tests have dates and, and every week I'll be like, here we are on a Monday or a Tuesday, excuse me, or a Thursday. And I'm going into chapter one. Like normally I'd be going into chapter one. So right now watch chap, watch the lecture, uh, read the book. Some people want to read the book first. Like everybody has different learning styles and I'm down with that, you know? So however it works for you, but I'm going to keep on people. Social observation is due. That's an easy one. You know, keep up with the discussion board stuff. You have to watch stuff. It's your opinion. Then you tie in some social to it. So yeah, the pace is on that pace right there. Now I have, I think in the syllabus, like a week by week breakdown of the fall, but that's gonna, that's gonna get, you know, that's, that'll be an influx. What I will never do is take an assignment and make it due sooner. The tests are all kind of like set in internet, internet stone, um, meaning they won't move because I think that it's important that people can rely on things, you know, like a test date. Um, if I do move a project or we're having a great discussion or we're going a little bit slower, then I might push something back a little bit. So I just ask that we're flexible. And the due dates under the assignment tab, when you click and actually see the assignments, um, then, then that's when those are due. And, and so reach out for any reminders you need, you know. The best way Thank to, you. the best way, uh, what's the best way to contact you? Email. I mean, you know, I do have a farm and I am busy with, with stuff, but, but most of the days I'll be around here and I reply to emails really fast. And I think our GTAs apply to emails really fast, really, really fast too. Uh, again, one of the reasons I love the social department is because those are the people, we are the people that if it's an 80 year old, they were marching for somebody's rights. If it's a 50 year old, they were marching for somebody's rights. If it's our grad students who are in their twenties, they have been working for somebody's rights. And everyone, like I think they've got the you are welcome here signs up, but they mean it in the social department. So it's a very diverse place full of fantastic people. And um, I'll, I'll put a plug in right now. If you want to major in sociology, it's some of the coolest people that I've worked with ever. I mean, they like me. Can you believe that after like 10 years? Uh, and I'm kind of a weirdo. So they accept everybody and, and I think it's cool. So, all right, other questions. Give me more questions. Can we take a class field trip to your farm? The, the 220 class, my environmental sociology class, does. We come out here and we do a whole thing on biodiversity, you name it. Um, this class will not. But like I said, I don't want to do, I didn't do all my lectures like in a, you know, I did it in my kid's room with all of his toys. By the way, Batman, hold on. Job of the hunt. Like if you move his arm, his mouth moves. Whoa. Yeah. Are you serious, Jason? Oh, you bet I'm serious. I collect toys. That's right. 
I was, I was born in 73, so I'm that first round of vintage toys, and my mom never sold all her toys, or my toys. She made me keep them, so then I passed them on to my boys, so total, total Star Wars nerd. My boys and I all the time go to Comic-Con. Um, yeah, you name it. I'll, I'll share stuff about me, but I'm going to do some videos out on the farm so that you can see the farm, stuff like that. Live stream to the farm? Sure, I'll do that. Hey, I have a 1954 tractor. It's awesome. And, and you got to know that I got a farm four years ago. Before that, I was musician, teacher guy, okay? Farm guy is way different. Uh, I do not look inside an engine and fix it usually, but over the last four years, I even have some of those skills, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll show you around the farm and maybe I'll do a video while I'm driving my tractor because that's totally safe. But I might try that. Anyway, all right, other questions. Uh, what do we grow? We've got um, 17 75 foot rows. We have over 100 tomato plants, 50 pepper plants, uh, flowers, edible flowers, um, beans. I mean, you, the, what don't we grow? Melons. Um, yeah, a ton of stuff. And it's all organic. We grow everything organically for a lot of reasons. And we'll talk about that this semester. Oh, I don't want to go too long here, but the paper project, okay? There's a 150 point paper project this semester. That's a big one but it's called Food Matters. And here's the deal. I want you to write about things that we can all relate to, not topics that I am passionate about. So yes, I'm passionate about food, but we all eat, right? We all eat to survive. And some of us are like knowledgeable about food or we eat organics because we believe in it. Some of us because of science, some of us because celiacs or because our food system is so broken that there are non-food ingredients that have made people sick. So the Food Matters Project, I'll talk about that all on its own one day. Check that explanation of that paper out. Look at that um, assignment. But it's going to be really awesome. Um, and, and yeah, I'm very closely connected to food. And one of the things that I'm going to ask you is, what's your relationship with food? Jason, why are you asking me such a weird question at 9.16 in the morning? Well, because maybe nobody's asked you that question before. What's, what's your relationship with food? Okay, so I'm going to back it on up. Yua, do you want to introduce yourself real quick and say hi? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, turn up just a little, maybe. Okay. Okay, so my name is Yue Xu, and uh, I'm a first year PhD student in sociology. I got both my uh, bachelor's and the master's degree at CSU. Uh, I'm interested in agriculture, uh, rural development, and East Asian studies. So just want to let your folks know, um, we are always here to help. And uh, please join me to create an inclusive classroom for everyone. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or uh, Verena. I believe she's there. Yeah, and the last thing uh, interesting about me is that I have little Schnauzer, and uh, he's three years old. He's a cute boy. Yeah, you have a Schnauzer? Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Um, all right. Is our other grad assistant here? Mm -hmm. You are? You can introduce yourself. I am. Yeah, I'm very. Hey, there Hello. we go. Hi. And you're in Germany, <laughs> I'm here. Right? You're in Germany right now, correct? I am. Yes. Okay. So that's the first interesting thing about me. You will not be seeing me wandering about uh, on campus or in Fort Collins. I will be staying here in Germany for the fall semester, taking social distancing very seriously. <laughs> um, but don't worry, I am still available to all of you, so please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or comments you may have. Just note, um, we do have a time difference, quite a significant one. I am actually eight hours ahead of you, so don't be alarmed if I don't get back to you immediately. It just may mean that I'm asleep. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Very excited to be working with you. Um, I'm also a first year PhD student in the sociology department, but I have a very odd background that I can tell you all about some other time uh, in cultural anthropology and computer science, among other things. And I have also worked on a farm in New Zealand as well as Peru. So I wish I could be there on the farm, but you know, you never know what the future holds. <laughs> uh, awesome, thank you. So let me just say a quick word. I love the grad assistants. They are the most capable, fantastic, smart. I just, I've always had such a good experience. So please reach out to these folks. Um, they're gonna be a great point of contact for you. Just like you can teach me something, they are gonna be able to teach you something and they're gonna be teaching me something and working with me. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a different 
type of beginning to a semester, but just let us know. Um, you've already let me know and I'll put your office hours up, but you know, what times work best and things like that. All right, other questions before we're out of here. Anything in the world, questions about me, this class, COVID, my opinions about things, what we're gonna be learning, anything. What kind of dog do you have? <laughs> what? What kind of dog do you have? Uh, I have three dogs, a Catahoula. Raise your hand or wave your finger if you've never heard of a Catahoula before. Okay, yeah. They're the Louisiana State dog and they can climb trees. If, if you look up Catahoula on YouTube, tree climbing, you'll see it. They're dogs that go into the swamps and flush out boars and bears and they're like the smartest dogs. So I hadn't had dogs for like 15 years. Julie and I hadn't had dogs 20 years in college, didn't have room for it. We got Huckle and we start to look up the thing about Catahoulas and they're like, first time dog owners should not have a Catahoula. That's like the first thing that it said because they're just so smart. So now that he's out here on the farm, okay, three nights ago, my son who is the most awesome guy in the world taking care of our chickens left the barn door open and coyotes killed 45 of our 60 babies that we just got. And yesterday when I was gardening, my other son looked out of the top window saw the coyote at 9 a.m. He was going to try and come up and get him during the day. And I was in the garden and Huckle and I popped around the corner and I was like, Huckle. And boom, he was down to the backfield in like two seconds. He, he knows all the perimeters. He, anyway, Catahoulas are the smartest dogs. Then I have uh, a pit bull and her name is Alma. And she is, I call her, we call her our snuggle muscle. Because uh, I guess as my 12-year-old uh, would say, she's thick. I don't know. I just like to use words. I don't even know what they mean, but yeah, she's, she's uh, awesome. I love her. And then we have a small dog and I've never been a fan of small dogs. I got to say, I've, I've been pretty prejudiced towards chihuahuas in my life. Just little yippy dogs. We got a Boston Terrier. Have you ever interacted with a Boston Terrier? They are a riot. Oh my gosh. I don't even know. She's, she'll be around during one of the lectures, I'm sure. But uh, so we have a, a, a Alma Boba, the, the female Boston Terrier, her name is Boba Fett because my son named her. Uh, I've got like a dog whisper in the house. So, uh, and then Alma and then Huckle. So those, those are the three dogs. Uh, any other questions about class? Um, yes. Uh, for um, the chicken people discussion, um, is the discussion on top hat or is it gonna be on canvas? The discussions are all on Canvas. Yeah. Okay, cool. Top hat is how we reply to stuff, and then we'll discuss sort of in person on Zoom. Um, okay. And Canvas is where that is. Yeah. Okay, and then you said that, okay, so the first post is due by September 3rd, but it's due September 10th. Is that like you need to make a post by the 3rd, or is it that you need to have everything done by the 10th about it? Uh, the due date is the official due date that's under assignments and discussions. So let's say that's the 10th. Okay. Is that right. what it is, the 10th? Yeah, no, September yeah, it's just, 7th. It's yeah, September it's 7th. Morning, chicken people. Yeah. So, okay. but the reason I have people make a post, at least one that's required a week ahead of time, is because, like I said before, people just always post in the last day. And then it's not a discussion. Mm. So, right. your first response has to be a week in advance. And the other two, and you can do more than two because they're pretty interesting discussions, but the other ones have to be on different days. That just keeps us straight in that we're not doing all the posts at the last day and just being like, Oh, I totally discussed like, cause discussing is like a back and forth. It's not just, you know, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Do um, you have aqua or hydroponics? Nope. Just doing everything out in the dirt out here on the farm. Other questions about the I, class, about me, about sociology. I had a question. Yep. So when we do zooms, will they always be at eight 30? Uh, you know what? I fudged that because I've been so busy. I know we meet at eight o'clock, but I was not feeling it the other day. I was thinking I was going to give everybody an extra half an hour. That being said, we do probably need to meet mostly during the time of the class. So I, I bet they'll usually be at eight. I mean, I'm up out here on the farm early. I've got two boys. My partner, she's already been at work for hours. You know, I was just trying to like take the edge off day one, maybe not be so brutal. Um, but whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, I actually only took one college class that was before 10 a.m. ever. 
And that's just because I'm a musician and I knew myself and I like to sleep. I think you got to learn when you can best learn. You know what I'm saying? And then that class happened to be senior, second semester of my senior year, where the class was only 15 people and people would actually clap for me when I showed up. You do not want to be that person. <laughs> All right, other questions about class, anything? Um, so should we regularly check Top Hat or if we have an assignment in Top Hat, will you just like link that in with our assignments? Or yep, I'll probably make it? an announcement about it or link it in. So I'll say, there's two questions. They'll be open only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm not gonna ask them on other days because I'll try and keep it like lined up with the class. And those questions will be open for five hours so that people have enough time to go in. It'll only take you a few minutes to answer them, but I understand that people are all over the place. So we'll do it that way. All right, other questions? Um, about me, yeah. about life, about the class. Uh, for your, the first social observation, um, is that is that a discussion or a paper based upon what we um, observed and the ch uh, chapter one reading? Yeah, it's really just about like, hey, okay, so the social observations observe people behaving for twenty minutes somewhere. You could you could watch them in a Zoom meeting. You could look out your window. You can if you're sitting outside on campus or where you live, you could do that. And then just write about it. What we're going to learn to do this semester is cultivate a sociological perspective. We're going to try and see things from a sociological point of view and be able to connect big picture things to small picture things. And so this is, you don't have to reply to others. It's just like, you know, a couple paragraphs of what did you observe? What was interesting about the behavior you observed? Just because we're going to do that at the end. But by the end of the class, you'll be equipped with all sorts of sociological knowledge and terms so that you'll understand human behavior better. And so it's kind of a contrast piece to that last one. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Other questions? So for the discussions, we answer right there in Canvas, correct? Yep. Yep. All the discussions are on Canvas. Awesome. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Anything else? For papers, are we turning that in like over Google Drive or email? Good question. Everything is submitted online through Canvas. Okay. So no paper. I, mean, I haven't been doing that for years. I mean, I teach an environmental sociology class and that's important to me as well. Well, I have a class of 233 people times 10 page per paper times. I mean, that's just, it's a tremendous waste. So everything submitted through Canvas directly. Yep. And then if you have something late, because like I said, I think for the big paper and other things, we take off a few points per day. Look, I'd rather you turn in a quality assignment a day late than rush and just turn in something not, not good. So most of those links for those assignments will be open. It'll show when you turned it in. And if I say turn it in by midnight and you turn it in at 12, 13, I mean, look, again, I'm here to help you and I'm not punitive like that. You know what I'm saying? If it's turned in the next morning, then it's a few points off, but you can still turn it in besides. Uh, my job is to just facilitate some awesome fun learning where you're gonna know a lot more than you did at the end of the semester than the beginning and about things that are critical to your functioning as a human being every single day. I mean, if I were to pick a country to be in right now, it would not be here, it would be with Verena in Germany and some other places that are taking this seriously as far as like the quarantine and social distancing and so anyway i want us to cultivate a very diverse perspective and i'm going to tell you this right now the most important thing you'll learn all semester in here is cultural pluralism the ability to see things from another person's perspective you don't have to agree with it but i want your knowledge this semester to be like this and then like this and then like this and then like this and i want us to increase like our understanding by uh, by looking through the perspective of other people through sociological lenses and paradigms, um, because that's that's really going to um, just be an important part of sociology. Yeah, cultural pluralism, and that's in the lecture and stuff like that. Any other questions, everybody? Anybody? Going once. Right, um, yeah, last question. Um, I want to try to give other people a chance okay. to ask any questions. You're cool. um, 
Are we going to talk about uh, this, like all of the different protests that are happening and the sociological effects within them and how violent and nonviolent protests can achieve change? Because, like, I mean, I would hope so, given that the entire city of, uh, was it, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, <laughs> is, on, is on fire sorry, right now. Sorry, sorry. I'm from Illinois, and like I said, you know, being that close to Wisconsin and hating the Packers, it's Kenosha. Yeah. Kenosha, okay. <laughs> Need to get some cheese curds down by the way, uh, pick up a couple beers, and uh, then, you know, go ice fishing and, and just make that good. So that's Kenosha. Sorry, sorry. Again, that was up. Um, yes, we will. Social change and social movements and power and access and race and gender, all of these things, we're going to be talking about that. Um, does our, like, sociology and CRJ, criminal justice stuff, we're closely related. Do we have a systemic problem with policing in this country on all sorts of different levels? We do. And regardless, we have to understand how that impacts us. I mean, what, two nights ago, you know, shot in the back seven times. Um, yes, we will talk about that in great detail because that's what sociology is. It's examining these relationships, these power relationships, examining culture. And I think a big part of that, um, is what's going on right now with social movements, which I'm very excited about. I never get excited about violence, but regardless, I get excited about people's movements and people voicing their opinion in a democracy. And that's like, democracy is a muscle, okay? You either use it and you keep it strong or you lose it, right? And I mean, I don't have to tell people here that there are people in some countries that really, really understand the importance of what happened in World War II, and we'll never forget that. And then there's some countries that get further away from that. Um, so we're gonna be looking at all those issues all semester long. And I know that it's a, an election semester, and I have already had to attend a meeting about how intense election semesters can be, but I've been teaching for 13 years. President is a temp job, okay? Whoever's in that White House, it's a temp position and there are things that change with every administration um, and with every year and with every political cycle. So it does matter and we will be talking about politics and relationship to sociology, but you know, I wanna make this as a value neutral class as possible. That doesn't mean that I don't have opinions about things and that you don't either. It just means that we need to be respectful in the way that we're putting them out there. And that's kind of the difference to my parents' generation and my generation and your generation. And I'm not a boomer, by the way, I'm no boomer. <laughs> somebody said the other day in class, something and I was joking and they said boomer. Then somebody's like, nah, everybody from Gen Z thinks anybody over 30 is a boomer. Look, pretty much, right? But like I said before, adults uh, to a certain degree have let us down and we need to examine why we haven't fixed systemic institutionalized racism, why we haven't addressed gender equity and the pay gap why we have these things, and we will all semester long. And those are the things that I'm excited to talk about um, for sure. And it's, it's, look, living is always an intense thing. What's happening now in this country and across the globe is not something that we haven't seen before. People's movements, protests, response to, to oppression, right? So yeah, we're going to talk about all this. That's a long answer just because I, um, I love those types of things. So we're going to be getting involved with all that. All right, we're almost done. Any other questions? So the next time we're uh, meeting is this Thursday at eight? Um, let, I'll give you 24 hours notice. I think right. that, uh, yeah, I think I'd like to meet Thursday at eight and we'll talk a little bit about logging in on Top Hat and a few things like that. Because like I said, I don't want the class to get too far out there. And even though I did all the lectures this summer, which is kind of weird, right? Because I was even trying to pretend like it was on different days. So I'd go in, do a 20 minute lecture, go in the other room, change my shirt and come back to the lecture because <laughs> I just want to like, you know, keep it fresh and stuff like that. But those have already been recorded. So then we'll use these meetings a couple times a week. Yeah, you know, that's my, that's my inclination. We'll meet a couple times a week from eight to nine at least and do that. Um, but I'll let you know online. Yeah, it feels yeah. good to be social on here. Yeah, totally. Any other questions? No? How many you might need to type. You might need to type that because your mic is all cutting out. I will totally answer that question.
Anybody type? How many lectures will there be per week? Uh, no more than, well, the lectures are all online. So as many as you want to watch at your pace. The first exam is over chapters one, two, and three. So I really wouldn't go past that as far as biting off information, you know? Oh, but that brings me to the point that I have a YouTube channel and not just because my 12 year old and 15 year old tell me that I could just retire someday and do YouTube videos because that's their plan somehow, I think. But um, I do it because I think it's cool to get notifications, to be able to go to a place that you know, um, yeah, they're gonna be on Canvas, but check the YouTube channel. You don't have to subscribe, I don't care, whatever gets you the notifications, but I'll put up stuff there from time to time. So, you know, at least you can find information and videos and lectures in different places. Does that sound good? So the amount of lectures per week is determined by how many you wanna watch and how much information you can kind of absorb. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, anything else? How many lectures do you do per chapter? average? Uh, I think I break them down into two or three. They're about 20 minute lectures, two or two or three episodes. Oh yeah, they're broken out like Star Wars episodes and the whole deal. Stars running the play. And you know what? I let my 12 year old edit some of them <laughs> because he's a master editor when it comes to that stuff. He's hilarious. So I'm going to let Zion do some of that stuff throughout the semester for fun. And uh, he's probably put his own channel at the back end of that to advertise shamelessly for himself at 12 years old. But he's an artist and a filmmaker and uh, a basketballer and all sorts of cool stuff. So anyway, um, anything else, everybody? All right, I'm going to cut it here. Um, what I'm going to do is when I exit out of this, it'll save and then I'll upload it later, okay, to the YouTube channel. And uh, I've got a YouTube channel for the Soch 100 then for the 002 and specifically for us the 003. So I'll try and put that there so everybody knows which Zoom videos are where. Um, I told you I would do it this way. Be good people and do good things. And I'm totally pumped up for this semester. Like I, I can't wait. I, I know, I know, I know it's virtual, whatever, but this is gonna be cool. And here's, my mom taught first grade for 40 years. And here's what she would say to me. I tell her, yeah, a student said that Mine were the only lectures last semester that he didn't absolutely hate watching. And of course, my mom is like, that's not a very nice compliment. I'm like, mom, it's a compliment from college students if people keep showing up in the morning, like all semester long, which my students normally do. So if I can do lectures that you don't hate and have it be fun, if I can interject a lot of energy into this class, and if you can learn a lot, um, then we're doing our jobs, all right? So be good people and do good things. Make me proud, be safe out there, be cool, because how long this is gonna last, even for a little bit, is totally determined upon you doing the right thing. Is there a right and a wrong thing? In regards to COVID, there is, so be cool. All right, everybody, take care, see you later, peace. Reach out if you need anything. Thank you. Thanks.